What is going on guys? Hope you're well wherever you are, whatever the t I'm gonna wait for that. I, there was 100% some kind of racing or biker club around Bedford. Like, it's mad every night and the weekends just get crazy. I'm pretty sure there was a Formula One car that went down my street the other, like, it's just mad. Today we are doing a Q and A. I put up a little question box. It didn't even have to be bodybuilding related. I just wanna kind of just answer a few questions a little bit more in depth, I guess. And if there's anything that you wanna know about me or just get to know me a little bit better, then obviously this was the opportunity to do it. So I've got my laptop here where I've got the questions. Enough. I'm gonna have to bleep that out. Enough of the nonsense. First question is, do you plan on hopping on gear? I'm gonna answer this question a little bit differently. So right now, no, that is not my intention. My intention is to step on stage and people are like, I can't believe that guy's natural. I want to provide shock factor for what's possible in natural bodybuilding. And I think I'm somebody who has the ability and the genetics to showcase that. I also don't think, like when I watch natural bodybuilding videos, there's not many people whose training that I watch, I'm like, I'm seriously impressed with it. It's just there's not many people who are natural that are putting out content that is mind blowing. Like one guy that whose name comes to mind straight away is Kiffy. Kiffy's probably like at the minute the strongest natural bodybuilder out there. One of my goals is for me to be that person. That's my initial goal. And obviously I don't need PEDs to do that. But I was having a conversation with one of my good friends, Ash, we've been training together for a while. And we always go back and forth talking about this and talking about the cons and what potentially going on PDs could actually do. And because look, to say like, it's something that you've never considered when you do bodybuilding. I don't know, I feel like most bodybuilders have kind of considered things or, or weighed, weighed up the options and whatnot. Um, and right now, it's not my goal. It's not my intention to do that. But I absolutely never know how I'm going to feel when I get maybe into my 30s or potentially my goals might change. And I think at that point, and when you do have those kind of questions, like, okay, should I do this? I think it's really important to weigh up how that's gonna impact your life financially, how it's gonna impact you as a person, how is it necessary for you to do that to reach your goals? Is the risk worth it for what you could potentially get out of it? Are you gonna be okay with the potential side effects? health-wise, cosmetic-wise, all of these things, right, that you have to consider. And every time I weigh it up, this whole point up until my life, the answer has been no, it's not worth you doing PEDs. And it still is now. Um, but I don't know how that might change as I progress through my life. Through my life? <laughs> through my life. And it's kind of similar to the fact that when I was younger, like let's say I'm 15 years old or 14 years old, and I'd think, why the hell would anybody want to get big and get muscle and look like that? And then as I got older and started training, it was, why would anybody want to step on stage in a thong? And now I do that. And I think it's very easy to think presently and think this is not what I want to do now, but I have no idea how I'm going to think in the future. And I think also the message here is when it comes to something like taking steroids, you have to, re that's, not, that's a decision that shouldn't be taken lightly at all like at all i think people get into things very flippantly uh and you shouldn't not with something like that so yeah good first question but right now no that is not the plan we'll go to a training one deload week versus a full rest week what is your preference in the past i've done things where it's like i take four full days off of the gym just four days of rest and then i get back to my normal training and then when i started working with aj kind of this thing where we do the same session, but we're, we're doing like a calculated one or two reps in reserve and we're taking off a set from each exercise. And honestly now, like I want to move to an approach that's a little bit more fluid. Like I go into the gym and depending on how I feel, that's what dictates the intensity. That's what dictates low choices. That will, that's what dictates how many sets and reps I do. Like I don't think it needs to be so robotic. If I get to a point where I need where let's say I go into a session, I've been pushing for a while, I go into a session, this isn't just normal, I'm tired and I can't be asked. This is, I'm on my ass here. I'm eating a lot of food and I'm still on my ass and I'm not, I don't feel very recovered. I'll just back off a little bit. I might keep the sets the same, I might keep the reps the same, but I might just drop the intensity a little bit. But my preference at the minute is kind of just something a little bit more fluid. Like I, it just kind of depends on how I feel on the day. <laughs> 
hope that answers your question. Rice and peas or jollof, which is more anabolic? Rice and peas all day. Yeah, that's, that's not even close. Rice and peas, and you gotta have it with curry goat, you gotta have it with mutton or oxtail, uh, or smacky and saltfish. That, yeah, way more anabolic. Next question is, if it fits your macros, flexible diet, any experience, opinions, pros and cons? And again, this is, this is such a preference thing. I can only speak from experience here, but since I started taking my bodybuilding a little bit more seriously, I essentially have a set meal plan that at times when I want to, or if I'm able to be a little bit more flexible, I'll make some food swaps here and there. But the idea now of me being like being in a position where I track my calories every day and I'm eating something different every day, it just seems long to me. And bodybuilding is not the only thing that I do in my life. So if I can have something that takes away the decision fatigue of my meals, like a meal plan, it just makes my life a whole lot easier. And this isn't me saying that everybody who does bodybuilding should follow a meal plan because that's just not true. And you don't have to eat the same things every day as a bodybuilder to be a successful bodybuilder. And there's so many cases to show us that that's, you just don't need to do that. But for me personally, just to take away that decision fatigue and maybe something that you could try is I just like meal plans. If it fits your macros is absolutely fine. Um, and I think if you're somebody who has experience and has a lot of nutritional awareness, it works pretty well. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's just a method of dieting that, that works pretty well. I do think if you're somebody who has very little understanding on factors that could make your dieting a lot easier, like food volume and picking foods that are higher or lower on the satiety index or including more veggies or like, do you know what I mean? Not just like loading your day with McDonald's and like grenade bars and Rice Krispie squares, actually having some whole foods in there, even though you are just tracking macros. I think a pro is obviously more freedom or food. I guess that's the biggest pro, just more, just more food freedom, I guess. Um, and the cons, like I said, like if you haven't got that nutritional awareness or that experience, you might just think, oh, okay, I'll just go, I can just fit this Krispy Kreme into my macros. And you could, but doing that consistently might make your dieting process a lot harder and it might have an impact on, on your health. So yeah, that's all I got for that one. Next question is, can you still dunk? Uh, I reckon I could, but I wouldn't even try. I wouldn't even try, bro, because that is a, that is a ruptured Achilles tendon waiting to happen. Like I never, these whole things, and I'm just going to a rant. You know with those guys that just go out and drink and because you've got big biceps, somebody's challenged you to an arm wrestle, wrestling contest and you've accepted. That's crazy, stuff like that is crazy to me. Like I wouldn't just now just go and try and dunk with no training or that kind of thing because my body hasn't moved like that in so long. Pretty certain that I could because I'm tall enough and I can still jump, but it's just a case of, is it worth the risk? I really do reckon I still could, but either my knee's getting blown out or I'm rupturing my Achilles 100%. Um, at what point, that's a good one, at what point did you discover bodybuilding to be a passion? It's been eight years now where I've been training and it's been such a gradual immersion into the, into the sport of bodybuilding. Like I didn't just start training and it was like, oh my God, I love bodybuilding and this is it. Like I. I started training and I fell in love with training and I fell in love with making progress and I started watching content and then I learned a little bit more and then I started coaching and then I thought about competing and I got a coach and then like it's been such a slow process so I can't pinpoint one specific moment where bodybuilding became my passion but really the main passion for me has been training and I've always been sporty. I've, I've never not been active ever in my life. And I've always been competitive. And then as soon as I stepped, or as soon as I had the ability to train with weights even, should I say, because I started training with weights in my uni dorm, and then I moved on to a gym. But as soon as I had that feeling, that's when I fell in love with training and weight training. And I realized that it was something that, and again, I think this is a lot of bodybuilders, I think it's a control thing. like. The more work that I put into this thing, I just I just get better and nobody else can throw that off. It doesn't matter what's going on in the news. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter about 
any stress going on it doesn't matter about blah whatever it, do, it literally doesn't matter if i just put work into this i get better and i was also seeing a pretty good response i think i responded pretty quickly to training despite having a terrible diet and yeah and that kind of just fueled it a little bit more when it came to competitive bodybuilding it kind of just for me and again this is an important message is this is for me this is just me it felt like a natural progression to to compete because the content that I was consuming, all of those guys were competing. I was then immersing myself into like train by JP forums and everyone was competing. That's kind of what got me interested in it. And I thought I could do this. And I started seeing natural shows and that kind of thing and thought I could be competitive. And it kind of just went from there, but there wasn't just like one moment. Um, it's been quite a slow progression into, into bodybuilding, but I've always been active. And yeah, weight training, it was just, as soon as I started weight training, I just fell in love with it. And I think it was just me, I'm personally responsible for my progression and no one can take that away from me. I hope that answered your question. After post-show, how long do you reverse diet before off-season? Don't complicate it, uh, recover. So gain a bit of weight, don't gain too much weight. I made a video on this, but gain like 5% of your stage weight within the first month maybe a little bit more if you're struggling really badly don't be a knob wait until you feel pretty much back to normal and that's going to come with an increase in body fat and increase in weight that for some people takes six weeks for some people it takes four for some people it takes eight and then you can kind of push things a little bit harder in terms of your training me personally i've just been pushing myself straight out of the gate <laughs> uh, well i say that there's a few things where i'm not going balls to the wall but for the most part, I'm pushing myself again because as the weeks go by, I'm putting in more food and I'm feeling better. But don't have this like robotic approach where it's like, okay, you need to spend six weeks in a recovery phase and then I can start my off season. Like, just go by how your body feels. And the only thing that really changes there is how much you're pushing in your training, potentially increasing the amount of volume you're doing in your training. And that's really it. And then you just need time with more body fat on you. Uh, and a bit more food in you to start to feel normal. My off season started as soon as I stepped off stage. We just started eating more food, reversed out of the diet, and that like, that was it. There's no specific time frame for, for everybody. Wasted the first three years with shit diet and training. Are newbie gains still, yes, are newbie gains still possible? Yes, well, not newbie, because you're not a newbie, but you're now going to provide a novel stimulus because you're going to be doing things that you've never done before. Like if you just done nonsense for three years and now you start progressively training and tracking your lifts and actually eating the way you're supposed to be eating towards your goals, you're going to see some great gains from that because it's a novel stimulus, your body hasn't done it before. So yeah, absolutely. It's funny though, because you say wasted, you, you may look back at what you're doing right now in three years and say that you wasted this time. So I think it's important just to realize that the previous you, it, it's just all part of the journey. Like don't look back and be like, oh, I just wasted it and, and get angry at yourself. It is what it is. You just learn more as time goes on. Um, and like I said, you probably look back in three years from now and be like, wow, like I didn't know as much as I thought I knew and I can actually make more progress here. And that's all part of the journey. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Make sure to subscribe, watch one of the videos here, and I'll see you next time.